morning. Good morning. It is good to see each of you here this morning. We know, of course, that there are those who are not here uh, this morning. And we think on those. Some, of course, are away, vacation, visiting family, hopefully, prayerfully, they are able to worship where they are. But who knows? There may be others who, who are not here. Maybe they're under the weather. Maybe they just chose not to be here, brothers and sisters. And if that is the case, whatever the case is, we certainly should be praying for them and doing all we can to encourage them to be here. And we should encourage one another. We are here today to, to not only worship the Lord, and I don't say any of this to take away from that. We are here to worship God, to, to uh, acknowledge Him and, and praise Him. But brothers and sisters, we are here to teach and admonish one another, to encourage one another, to warn one another. And we, we ought to do all we can to do so. And hopefully... Uh, that's exactly what each one will be doing today, that will set our hearts and our minds in, in the right uh, place. You will bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we humbly bow before you at this time in prayer and praise, Father. We worship you. We know how wonderful you are, how just you are. You are God, and, and Father, we know we are not. And we, we praise you and exalt you, and we hope and pray that, that our worship of you is pleasing and acceptable. Father, we thank you for, indeed, as we have expressed already, that we thank you for the blessings, the many blessings you have given us. Father, we thank you for your word that teaches us the way we should go. And we pray that we will be diligent and faithful uh, to study your word, to pay attention to what it teaches, and to follow it, and to live by it, Father. That we, and that we will share it with others. We pray these things humbly in Christ, the most precious and holy name. Amen. We read, of course, from the book of John, chapter 1, and or 1 John chapter 1, and verse 7, uh, a few moments ago. And, and 1 John, uh, indeed the whole book, but, but there in, in, in chapter 1 is... An interesting read, and again, the entire book, and, and there are some who question whether or not there's some contradictions in here. Because John points out that, well, you, you, you can't sin, and then he, yeah, and he points out, well, if you say you can't sin, you're a liar, and some say, well, there's a contradiction there. Well, we know, of course, if you study carefully, there's no contradiction in what John says there. But our, our purpose this morning is not to look at that, to look at that supposed contradiction, but rather to look and notice again there in verse 7 of chapter 1, and we'll, we'll back up there in, in to verse 5. Um, this then is the message which we have heard of Him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. Brothers and sisters, we look at a text like this, and there are many texts like this in the Word of God, and we see, that we ought to see, we ought to understand at least, uh, we see the... The Christian, do we not? The Bible is full of, of, of text. And we look in the New Testament and it is full of text that teach us about the Christian. We recently, or not too long ago, time passes by so quickly, but we uh, looked at, of course, the Sermon on the Mount and studied it a bit. And, and we noticed, of course, in that Sermon on the Mount that Christ lays out 
among other things, he lays out the Christian's life. He lays out the way we ought to live and, and the way God expects us to live, the way that we ought to expect ourselves to live. We look about us, brothers and sisters, and I don't say this to be judgmental. I don't say this to be unkind. I don't say this to be ugly or hurtful to anyone. But we look about us and we see a world that is full of sin. A world that is full of evil. We look at such things as these shoot, mass shootings that are going on today. And we look at all this violence and, and people naturally want to solve the problem. And we hear such solutions as, let's take away these, these uh, weapons of mass destruction, as they are called, these, these automatic weapons and so forth. And I, I don't know which side, I suspect I can guess, but, but I, I don't know for a fact uh, what, which side everyone here is, is on on that issue, and I don't want to know. I, you are free to think what you want to on that subject. But brothers and sisters, I suspect that if you took away every gun that ever made it illegal to own any weapon of any sort, as far as guns, that you would still find people who would kill other people. They'd find other ways. Because you, you can take a knife and kill people with it. You can take... I saw... There was an incident of road rage. I think it was this morning we saw it on the news where, where they, and they did catch, or they're looking for these ladies, where a couple of women ended up with three of them, but where apparently there was a lot of heavy traffic and a woman starts to pull in front of another one and you notice she suddenly has a baseball bat hanging out her window. I guess trying try to suggest either let me in or else. And, and she gets kind of out between her, this car and the next car and then proceeds to get out and hit uh, start banging on the hood of this car with with the baseball bat at which time of course the other woman gets out and they end up in a scuffle and the driver of this other car and she gets out and 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 I guess tries to break them up ends up with the baseball bat and and, and these things go on people are insane bro brothers and sisters and and lest I'm careless in the word that I use, the word insane there is not necessarily the one that I want to use. The word I want to use, brothers and sisters, is people are full of evil. They're full of evil. And lest we think that we are immune to that, we better be careful because, brothers and sisters, and I don't say this to be judgmental or ugly, but I have been in uh, attending church services and this goes back to when I was a child and I was being taken to denominations I've been attending church services and I have watched on television with with various so-called preachers and so forth and brothers and sisters there are those in the church and, and, and certainly in Christendom as a whole but but in the church herself that are full of evil uh, that, that are attending We'll say that. They're attending and they're, they're full of evil. You, you, you would struggle, brothers and sisters, to identify, to take some within the Lord's church and, and put them as, here and then set beside them someone of the world, someone who is fully engulfed in the world and tell much difference because they're doing essentially the same thing. And brothers and sisters, shame on us if we fit that category. Shame on those who do that who profess to be Christians and yet demonstrate through everything they do that they are far from it. John here points out what? If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we... If... If, brothers and sisters, we walk in the light. If we walk in the light. You notice that word, if? We've talked about it before. You see, people who, who get into premillennialism and, and they talk about the, the kingdom and, and, and they misunderstand it and they go back and they look at the Israelites. Well, well the Lord promised the Jews that, if, if, that He was going to give them the promised land and He, and he didn't. 
fulfill it. What Joshua says he did, and there's others who say that he did, that, that identify that he, he certainly did. But you'll remember, of course, that, that same two-letter word, if. He gave them, if you obey my commandments, then here are the blessings. And if you don't, here are the curses. And he laid out before them with that if. Here is our two-letter word, if, brothers and sisters, if we walk in the light. We have fellowship one with another. Because if I'm not walking in the light, brothers and sisters, you don't need to be having fellowship with me. If you're not walking in the light, I don't need to have fellowship with you. We need to correct each other. Don't get me wrong. We need to love one another and try to bring each other back into the light, back to where we need to be, but then we don't need to be in fellowship with one another. But if we walk in the light, we have fellowship one with another. The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. His blood continues to cleanse us if we are walking in the light, brothers and sisters. And what's the alternative? What if I'm not walking in the light? I don't have fellowship with you. And His blood isn't cleansing me. And that goes for any one of us, brothers and sisters. We are to walk in the light. And, and it should come as no surprise. I mentioned, of course, the Sermon on the Mount there and, and how it let, lays out how the Christian should live. It should come no surprise that if I'm walking in the light, guess what else I ought to be doing? As Jesus commands there in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. I ought to be walking the light and letting my light ultimately reflect in His light. That's the light that we ought to be showing. We ought to be showing the light that is in it, that, that is shining forth from the Lord. And we need to understand that, brothers and sisters, and we need to be living our lives in such a way that brings glory to God. We, we live in a world, brothers and sisters, that is so dark, so evil, so full of wickedness. And many of the problems we see in the world, I, I referenced, of course, these mass shootings. And, and I didn't do that to get political. I didn't do that to take a stand one way or the other on it. I, I didn't mention the baseball bats to take a stand on whether or not somebody should own a baseball bat or not. I didn't mention road rage to, to argue whether or not people should have cars. I will say that you ought not to get out there and get so upset that uh, they, they had on a uh, family feud about that. What if somebody uh, cuts you off or something? What's your first reaction? And Of course, the, there were some pretty interesting terms as far as the you know reactions that people would have yelling at somebody uh, cursing them whatnot brothers and sisters we ought not to react that way we ought not to act these ways we ought not to be uh, behaving that way <clears throat> brothers and sisters on the contrary we ought to be living our lives in a way that reflects God, that shows forth God and, and brings praises uh, to Him. We ought to be living our lives in, in love of God. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 and 38. Matthew 22, verses 37 and 38, of course, uh, Jesus teaches here that we are to love the Lord our God. Matthew 22, verses 37 and 38, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. We ought to love God. And the second, he goes on in verse 39, And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Brothers and sisters, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
Jesus would say. Jews didn't get that, did they? And I fear, brothers and sisters, we don't get that. In a recent dis discussion with someone, I'll not identify who that individual is, but I was recently discussing some things with someone and, and asking their, I'll use that phraseology, their uh, thoughts on the subject. And, and I asked, well, what are your thoughts? And, and the reply was so simple and so, so direct and, and, and thought-provoking. Uh, love your enemies, right? Love your enemies. We, we are to love our enemies. Now, not everybody is our enemies. And sometimes someone may think, well, they're your enemies, when, when in fact they're not. Someone, oh, this person is, is your enemy. No. I don't have a problem with the person. But brothers and sisters, you know, we look at this text, and we've looked at it at various times here in, in Matthew chapter 22, in verses 37 and following, and we see how we are to love the Lord our God with, with as I've, I've said before, everything that we are, with our very being, and, 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 and to love Him completely and, and, and all, and, and love our our. our what? Love our brother, huh? Love our neighbor. It says here. John 13, verses 34 and 35, Jesus teaches us, in fact, to love our brother. Love one another. But brothers and sisters, perhaps we should start, and this isn't, again, to take away from God, but perhaps we should sometimes, when we're talking about love and who we are to love, perhaps we should start with, love your enemies. Jesus said that, did He not? Jesus said, love your enemies. Question that, of course, you can look in Matthew chapter 5 and beginning there in, in verse 43. Again, the, the Sermon on the Mount. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Of course, we just read where he says that. that do we not? It comes a little bit later. But love, love your, your neighbor. He didn't say, Hate thine enemy. You've heard it said, Love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. We ought to talk, when we talk about love and who we all love, we ought to start with that text. Not, not to diminish God in any sense, but if I am to love my enemy, if I am to, if I am to react toward those who... who who do me harm, who despitefully use me, if I am to have that attitude toward them, then I ought not to have any problem loving my brothers and sisters, loving my neighbors, and loving God. Should I? I can love those who can't stand me and who treat me terribly. I, I can love anybody, can I? I ought to. Brothers and sisters, we ought to have that attitude of love. We ought to have, brothers and sisters, that, that attitude of humbleness. We know, of course, uh, in, in Philippians chapter 2, we see the humility of Christ. Philippians chapter 2, beginning with verse 1, uh, Paul here writes, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, of any fellowship of the Spirit, of any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Verse 4, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now let's stop right there, brothers and sisters. We ought to have an attitude that I'm not more important than everybody else. How many times could we see, we talked about these problems and the, the evilness and, and the mass shootings and, and their scary thoughts, brothers and sisters. I remember when I was in, in school and I, I didn't see these things. I, I, you start to see some of these, some of these events that are taking place in, in, at whenever I was finishing up school and just after I'd gotten out and even had one not too far from where I lived. 
But, but when I was in school, I didn't see that. And as a parent, I assure you, it, it concerns me, worries me about these things. I worry as a parent. But not just those things. I worry about the evilness that is in this world. Brothers and sisters, so many problems would be, would be solved if we would learn to love. If the world would learn to love instead of hate. We see people talk about racism. We'd start loving rather than hating. You'd see racism go away. I'd love the person who was different than me. I look about here. I, I, I remember, I, I pointed this out before. I remember whenever I, I first came here and, and, and we moved here, started worshiping with the congregation and, and of course, started preaching. I remember looking out and we had people of different races, different backgrounds. We had people who were quote unquote, and I use this terminology loosely because how many of us are actually white? You know, but white. We had people who were black. Again, I use that term loosely. We had people who, who were Hispanic. You know, but, but even within our backgrounds, uh, you know, look at us. I, I had Someone point out she's Italian. Uh, she, I pointed out to her she's a little bit of several things because she's got some Italian in her, but it's not just all Italian. I can assure you because I, I I describe myself as a mud in, in that terminology, and we know what a mud is, right? Just a mixed dog, right? Well, I'm just a mud is what I am. I, I'm just a mixed person. I, I just have all kinds of little parts. From what I've been told, I've not done the genetic background check, but and don't intend to. But brothers and sisters, none of that makes a difference, does it? It shouldn't. And if I would simply love people instead of worrying about what their race was, about what their background was, about what their handicaps may be, if we want to use that terminology, perhaps that's not politically correct today, what their difficulties are, perhaps they have speech issues or, or, or they can't get around like, they, like others can, what difference does those things make? They don't lessen the value of the person, what their gender is. There are people in this world who, who hate people because of their gender, because they're either a man or a woman. And, 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 and there are countries that literally, if you're a woman, you have to cover yourself completely up and, and hide yourself away and, and you're less of a person and you aren't treated with, with respect and rights. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches to respect people as far as, as treating people fairly and loving people. Love our enemies, we're taught. Having humility, brothers and sisters. Mark chapter 10 Jesus, of course, as, as we have pointed out there, and we, we note there, we, we, of course, did not conclude the reading there in, in Philippians 2. But in Philippians 2, of course, as you're turning to Mark 10, uh, there in verse 5, it points to Christ, who had that humble spirit, who, who came to this earth and died on that cross, willing to suffer that, that, that death. Mark 10 and in, in verse 45 specifically, we'll begin with verse 43, but so shall it not be among you, but whosoever shall be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. Now stop there. I promise we're going to go ahead and read verse 45 here. Just as Paul does there in Philippians 2 in the first four verses, he, he lays out that we are to have that humility. Here Christ is pointing out that we are to have that attitude of a servant, and as Paul goes on to point to Christ as, as our example, here Jesus says, For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. Brothers and sisters, I despise being called pastor. I don't have anything against elders. I wish we had elders here. But brothers and sisters, I am not an elder. I don't meet those qualifications for a number of reasons. I'm not qualified. And I despise being called rep or being called pastor. And, and 
I don't generally get called reverend, but I don't want to be called that either because I'm not God. But there are those who, who, di who just love those terms and, and to be called those things and show them that respect. I want to be treated fairly like anybody else, but I don't want to be singled out and identified as somehow I'm more important than everybody else. And yet I submit to you there are those who that is the exact thing they want. I can't read somebody's mind, but I've been around, I've seen enough, and I know enough to know that there are those, and I'm not saying all, but there are those who that's why they want those, term, those terms used for them. I, I joke with some of the, the, the preachers from, from other congregations when we get together, and I joke with some of them, and we, we go back and forth and tease each other and call each other, and we're doing it kind of jokingly, uh, I call each other reverend and right reverend and the doctor right reverend and all of this, you know, and, and being a little facetious about it. But there are people who do that. You hear about doctor so-and-so and right reverend and, and pastor and all this. Brothers and sisters, I, I don't need those terms. I don't want those. And Christ certainly, He didn't shy away from who He was, but yet He was humble. He didn't come to be served. There are those who, who quote-unquote serve, but they're more about being served than they are about serving. They have that attitude of not humility, but of exalting themselves. Who shall be the greatest? We saw it among his, his apostles, did we not? There, there's what's going on here. Who, who among us would be the greatest? Brothers and sisters, is that what we think here when we gather together? Who among us is the greatest? If it is, we ought to be ashamed. If it is, we need to change. We, we are here to serve, not to be served. We ought to have that spirit of humility. And again, if, if we would see more people who would do that, we would see more problems being solved. Less of these problems. The golden rule, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Jesus says, Therefore all things whatsoever you would do that men should do to you, do ye, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Treat others as you would like to be treated, right? If we'd spend more time trying to treat, treat others kindly, lovingly, showing them that kindness and mercy, many of the problems that we see in this world would be done away with. I've said before, and, and I know, you know, I majored in political science in school from a very young age. I was very interested. I remember when I was six years old, we had a couple of encyclopedias, dictionaries, uh, I think one was an encyclopedia and one was a dictionary maybe, and, I, and, and it so happened we had one, I don't even know where my, my mom got them, but, but we had one that, that laid out uh, the various presidents, and I would read those things over and over and over again, because they fascinated me, and, and I went on and majored in political science in, in college because that was an interest to me. I liked that subject. And brothers and sisters, we look at those things and, and we hear people today say in politics, well, focus not on the, the social issues, but the economic. I, I pointed out to you before, you know, they're, they're saying that, but it's the very social, quote unquote, issues that we ought to be focusing on. It's, it's the Word of God we ought to be studying. It's, it's being right inside of God that we ought to be worried about. Because the economic issues won't be a problem if we'll focus on this. We, we, we hear people lament and call for banning assault weapons, and we hear people who, who they even had the New York mayor, mayor uh, here, uh, here, here a couple, three years ago, four, five, whatever it was, who came up with the brilliant idea of banning these big drinks, 
You remember? Did, did you hear about that? That, that? He started banning these big, huge, I'll say gulps, you know, the, the big, huge drinks that you have. As though that's the problem. People are overweight. They're obese and they need to be told not to eat these things. Brothers and sisters, you can tell me that I need to lose a little weight if you want. And, and ultimately, you can tell me I'm not allowed to eat this. But you know what? You can take, you can eat healthy food and still be overweight if you eat too much of it and not exercise it. Ultimately, you want to solve a lot of these problems. You solve them by turning to God and serving Him. Doing what He says. Brothers and sisters, we ought to treat others with kindness. Treat others the way we would want to be treated. And again, a lot of these problems would, would be solved if, if, we, if we would. Paul in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 would write, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I am crucified with Christ. You remember that command, take up your cross daily? We are to be crucified with Christ. And someone says, well, I don't want to get how someone go out here and nail me to the cross. Brothers and sisters, that is not what Paul was talking about here. It is not what Christ was talking about when he said, take up your cross. It is not literally talking about it being going, going and being nailed to a cross. But when we are baptized, we are buried with Christ, as we read in Romans chapter 6. We, we, we are crucified. We crucify our old man. We put to death that old person we were. And we start living. We, we arise a new creature. We become something else. Perhaps we start prioritizing. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 teaches us perhaps we start seeking the kingdom and its righteousness and, and Stop worrying about the things of this world. Brothers and sisters, we need to live as the Lord would have us to live. We need to live that Christian life. Live today. Again, if you keep track of, and I often refer to this, the, the list that I gave. And, and on there it's simply entitled, Good and Evil. And though our lesson perhaps is not, quote unquote, good and evil, per se, but we, we ought to look at the way we live and make certain that we are living the Christian life. We are living the godly life. We are living faithfully to the Lord and serving Him. I mentioned this morning in Bible class, of course, we concluded world religions today, looking at that in the Bible class. Next week, we're going to begin to look at uh, the, the Christian graces found there in, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and following. A text I know we're familiar with, one that, that is important. Those things ought to be put in our lives, added to our lives. We ought to see, as, as uh, Paul writes there in Galatians 5, verses 22 and following, the fruit of the Spirit. These are things, and, and we've looked at the fruit of the Spirit earlier this year, of course. And, and these are things we ought to see in our lives that ought to be seen by others. They ought to be able to recognize there's something different about this person. This person isn't like the world. I had someone say that to me recently. And I'm glad they see something different. I hope they do. Not to exalt myself. Not that they look at me and say, that Robert, he's such a great guy. He's so different than everybody else. but because they see that, that there is something different and, and perhaps they understand there's something better. We hear about, and I'm sure most of us have heard that, and, and if we haven't, I'm sure we will, and, and it worries me about my own child. And I hope she understands, and I hope each of us understands, that you'll hear people say, 
everybody's doing. Everybody's drinking. Everybody's uh, you know, whatever. No, everybody's not. I had someone who told me they didn't believe what I said when I said I'd never drunk any alcohol. They didn't believe what they wanted. To, if they don't want to believe me. That's their business. I, I don't have any desire to have any. It's never been a problem for me. There are some who struggle with it, but I, I don't. Now, there are other things, lest anybody think that I'm perfect, there's other things that I have struggled with over the years. Problems, <coughs> sins that, that, that I have struggled to... to get control of. Brothers and sisters, we ought to live our lives as Christians. We ought to put to death that old man. And, and if we are Christians, we've said that we have, haven't we? we we've set forth that that's what we did when we came forth and obeyed the gospel. And we were baptized, immersed in the water for the remission of sins when we, we when we had that done, that we, we were crucifying that old man, having that old man or, or woman put to death. But is that what we have done, brothers and sisters? Is that what you have done? I look about, and most here, I, I believe, have obeyed the gospel, have, have been baptized. If, if you are here and you haven't, though, if you look at, at your life and you say, you know, I know I, I, I haven't done this. I need to. I, I know what I, I need to do. I understand that this is what needs to happen and, and here's why. And I understand this. The Bible teaches that we hear the Word. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Repent of our sins. Confess Him to be the Son of God. And be baptized, immersed in water for the remission of those sins. You're here having never done so, we would encourage you to do so. Maybe you're here and, and, and you're a Christian. Maybe you look at your life and you say, though, somewhere in something that was said today, maybe you say, you know, I know I need to correct that. <clears throat> or maybe something that wasn't mentioned today. Maybe some sin in your life is separating you from God. Now's the time to fix it. Don't look and say, well, you know, I'll take care of that. You know, we're kind of pressed for time here. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that later. Brothers and sisters later may not get here. You know, we, we look at our lives and every day we ought to be reminded later may never get here for us. How many people over the last year, how many people over the last month, how many people today, if we just frankly look at today, the, I mean, we're, we're not even noon yet. And, and how many people today left this life unprepared because they were waiting for later and now they don't have any later? He promises. We read there in, in, in 1 John chapter 1, specifically looking at verse 7, but there in verse 9, as I believe we got to, oh, we may have stopped at verse 8, I think, but as verse 9 teaches, of course, if we're faithful to confess our faults, He's faithful to forgive us. You're here if you have need. We encourage you and plead with you to come while we stand and while we sing. Tis so sweet to cry.